Hi, we welcome you to sharing your vision. We have a very special guest and her name is Roxy Morris. She's with us via Skype from Kissimmee, Florida. Thank you, Roxy, for being with us. It's exciting to have you here. Hi, thank you for having me. Working mom, but an yeah. author. So we have yeah. lots to talk about. <laughs> yes. I'm really excited. How was your start uh, as an author? Well, as an author, my start was actually, I would just say it was kind of God led without me knowing. Um, the reason why I say that is because I was actually in an event and the person at the event had some tickets and they said, I have these tickets to a seminar and this seminar is about writing books and um, they're free tickets and you, you and your husband can have them if you want them. And so we ended up at this book writing seminar and um, from the book writing seminar, it basically was a how to you know, put it all together because everyone can have great ideas of what they would write in a book, but it seems overwhelming when you think about the entire process of creating a whole book from beginning to end. So um, in the seminar, they really just taught us how to put it together. And so I took it upon myself to take the skills that I learned there and from there start writing and seeing um, what I really wanted to talk about and who I wanted to talk to and you know what experiences that I had in my own life that I could help other people with and that's kind of how it all developed so yeah well that's really exciting and you got a real good idea of how to prepare now we're going to talk more about the book but I want to also talk about the working mom in Roxy Morris yeah yeah it's it's um it's an interesting balance because in my life I've had different position. So I've had different things that I've been doing. So my husband and I have an animation company and he creates cartoons. And so what I do with him is I help with all of the marketing and the emails and the talking to people. And then because I have a degree in marketing and merchandising, I have a really good eye for color. So I've really helped him to know where to put the color and where to put the logo and different things like that, that he was struggling with. And so that's been really exciting. And then another part of me um, is get, I get to be a dance teacher right now as well, um, which I grew up dancing. I danced for about 15 years um, and I used to dance for Univision as a child. And then um, so now I get to teach it. So that's another part of my working momness. And I've also taught um, part time at my at the school that my children go to so that I could be near them. So there's a lot of working mom going on. It's really exciting to hear about all this because there's a lot of working moms out there um, that would love to hear stories like your life uh, so they can also be encouraged to either write a book or maybe go into other facets of careers and endeavors to make life exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important to, um, you know, dealing with the mom guilt, like they call it, when you think, am I spending enough time with my kids? Am I not? So I think one of the important things is always asking God for direction of, am I in the right place at the right time? So for me, I never thought I would teach in a school. <laughs> um, that was not something on the books for me in my life, if you would have asked me, you know, 10 years ago or something before kids. But I really felt that I was supposed to be near my kids in a certain season in their life. And um, it was at a point when my daughter in particular was having a very hard time in her class. And so I had to be open to this new idea that I never thought I would experience. So I think being a working mom is very seasonal, I think, and at least in my experience, because we have to see the development and the growth of our family. And it's not the same being a working mom when you have a newborn that maybe you're breastfeeding and needs you 24 seven all day. And then being a working mom when your kids are in college, it's totally a different experience. And it's totally a different amount of work that you can do either in or out of the home. So I think it's important to be um, patient with yourself if you're trying to to build a business or build a career or build a book or do something like that you have to be realistic with where you are as a mom and if it fits into what you're trying to do there first because our first family I believe is our ministry definitely and when did you uh, understand that God was calling you for ministry you know, I think I understood it very early on. Um, I grew up in church. 
Um, I grew up in church and then I went astray um, around 17 years old. But I think that from about 12 years old, I just had this relationship with God that I just, I knew that I was meant to do something, you know, for him. Um, but then I decided to kind of go on my own way and, and make some really interesting choices in life, um, which are all in my book actually. And it talks about what I learned from those things. Um, but when I came back and I got serious about, you know, going back to Jesus and going back to church and I just knew in my heart that, that, you know, my, my vision is the same as everyone else that I think is a Christian, which is to make the hope of Jesus known. Wow. That's, that's wonderful. Now I want to go into the author side and yeah. um, I know that you've written two books. Talk to us about the first book and um, what it's all about. Um, so my first book is called Momanizer and it's also called Masterpiece. And it's the idea that we're meant to live a bold life and that as women, we are not meant to be timid or um, meek when it comes to our faith, right? Because we can be shy. There are some of us that tend to be a little more quiet and a little more shy. But when it comes to our faith and the way that we pray and the way that we believe in things for our future and for our family's future and for our business future, it should be bold. It should be a bold faith that we have for that. Yes, it makes us courageous because yeah. we have to balance and juggle so many things at the same time. It's not yeah. like one at a time. <laughs> no, never one at a time with women, right? <laughs> yes. Well, being a mom, being a working mom, being an author, a dancer, an instructor, a teacher, that's a lot. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it really is. And, you know, it can be very overwhelming. I actually struggled with a lot of anxiety. Um, even before I was a mom, I was working a job where I had, you know, 12, 14 hour days, six days a week. Um, and I started dealing with anxiety and panic attacks. And I had a panic disorder and I actually couldn't leave my house to even walk my dog at one point because I was so stressed out. And, you know, it was that fear of the future, which I feel right now with everything going on with the pandemic and everything, we can get so afraid of, God, what is it going to look like? What does next month look like? What does next year look like? And so I think it's that was something I really struggled with that I feel like it's so important to remember where our hope lies and where our foundation lies. And the more that we look at God, the more that we look at Jesus and the more that we dig into his word, then we have a sound foundation and everything can come, but we know where we stand because we know who's holding on to us. That's so important, Roxy, uh, to understand that because that would be the place where we need to be whenever life seems overwhelming, whenever situations just seem so abundant and we want to get a hold of these things and it seems like we can't because everything is happening too fast and it's too much at the same time. But we need to be quiet at that time. We need to just uh, wait on God to help yes. us through it. Yes, and he actually, when I was struggling with this, I clung on to this Bible verse, which is why the book is called Masterpiece. And it's in Ephesians 2.10, and it says that we are God's masterpiece. And then it says he created us for Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared beforehand that we should walk into them. And I just remember thinking, number one, God is calling me a masterpiece. And, you know, women, we're so critical of ourselves, of our body. When you have a baby, you just feel like an ogre. You know, you think you look like Shrek. Your nose is all big and your belly looks crazy because there's no more baby. And so you deal with such um, like personal insecurity, right, with how you look and who you are and what it means to be a mom now. And how is that different from what I was doing before? And I just remember thinking, God says I'm his masterpiece and I am sitting down criticizing God's masterpiece. Who am I to criticize him and the work that he thinks is his perfect work, right? And then another thing was, it says he prepared beforehand what we should do that we should walk into them. And so I really, that, that idea of, I don't need to figure out my whole life from A to Z. I don't need to know what school my kid's gonna go to if they were born yesterday. I don't need to know if they're gonna go to college or if they're gonna go to trade school or if they're gonna you know, do whatever. God, he created the steps before 
I was even here on this earth. And so I think a lot of it comes in letting go and trusting that everything that we do, if we're looking for him in it, he's going to bless. And so I just took off the stress that I was feeling on myself of, I need to figure out where I'm going to live and what I'm going to do and what my house is going to be and where my kids are going to go to school and all of those things that give us such anxiety as moms, right? Because it's scary, <laughs> you know, it's scary to be in charge of another human being, but resting in him and knowing he decided this work already for you. That's very, very like that for me was a big deal. Just recognizing that. Now, living in these times uh, where we're at home and uh, we're, the, we're, we're with the family, what is your aspirations right now? You know, my family is in a very particular situation because while this was all happening, we were actually remodeling a home to move into. And we moved into that house. Basically, um, a few days later, they said, you know, we should stay at home. And that would be the safest thing to do for our families. And the school got closed and all of that. And so my biggest thing right now that I've been focusing on is the idea of the value of being home and the value of what it means to enjoy our family. Because we, in our regular life, you know, we're in and out, we're rushing, we're getting the kids to school, we're getting to work, we're doing this on time, that on time, packing the lunch, and trying to, at the same time, have our worship and have our devotionals and all that, right? But the idea of being home and enjoying the home, enjoying every part of the home to the point that we we don't really have an excess place that doesn't get used in our home right now because we want every part of our home to be where we live in. And so that's been the most important thing for my husband and I is creating those moments as a family and being together and making our home somewhere to abide and to rest and to rest and bring God's presence into our home on a daily basis. Oh, I love that. Have you continued to write? Have you continued to look into um, writing more books, getting more information out there? Yes. So I actually, um, I do blog and I have a blog. It's roxymorris.com, which is easy. It's my name. Um, and on Instagram, I always write blog posts under all of my pictures. Um, but right now I have been um, hearing the Holy Spirit has been talking to me about what it means to have simple faith. And so I was reading that story about Jesus, where the man comes up to Jesus and he says to him, you don't have to go to my child to fix them. I know you, or his, his servant, actually, it's someone that works for him. He says, you don't have to go up to him and fix him. I know that you can do it if you say the word, because I am someone who says the word and it gets done. You know, and he talks about how he's in a position of power and people command him and he commands other people. And so at the bottom of that that story, I love the message version of the Bible. It's my favorite and also the Passion Translation. Um, but at the bottom of the story in the message version, it says, um, because he had simple faith, his servant er, was healed. And so the idea of having simple faith, and recently I was praying and I said, God, what do you want me to teach my kids during this time? And he talked about simple faith. And it's just believing who Jesus says he is, believing who he says that I am, which goes into the idea of the masterpiece and mom and I's book, which is believing who God says we are, and then living and walking in that. So believing that if he says I have the power to speak to anything, whether it's financial, whether it's physical, whether it's praying for others, we have the power that's in him to speak and to live it. So that's um, an idea that God's been speaking to me about. So I believe my next book would probably be about having simple faith and what that means. I think it's awesome. So Thank if you. God gives you that ability um, to be able to write about simple faith, my goodness, that's going to be a powerful book because we need simplicity so. in this complicated environment that mm -hmm. we are in and our children are growing up as well. Yes, I really agree. And I think just the simplicity too, like what I was talking about the home, you know, the simpleness of what a home is for, you know, in the Bible, it tells us that the wicked will own homes and never live in them. You know, and if you think about it, how many of us 
have grown to be those wicked people because we have these homes, we pay mortgage or we pay rent or we pay water, we pay gas, whatever it is, light, electric, and we don't even spend the time in this beautiful blessing that God has given us. And so it's like the simplicity of knowing what our home is for right now, that's been really, really hitting my husband and I, you know? So I think there's something in, in the simplicity of life right now. I definitely would like you to return once that book is already available because I that think be it's honor. a wonderful thing. Uh, that's the first time I hear in a long time about the simplicities. It's so important uh, because it's going to take us to a place where we're going to be comforted by the Word of God. And it's not yes. complicated. It's something that you can actually um, put into your life and your schedules as you proceed every day and yes. how important it is to grow in that simplicity in the faith because then that takes you into the depth of faith itself. Yes, wow. it's so true. Well, I, I think it's wonderful and um, I'd like to know what are uh, the things that you have for dancing? Are you gonna continue to uh, instruct the students uh, grow in that aspect as well? Well, when it comes to dance right now, a lot of dance studios have been doing Zoom calls as um, a dance way right now. So it's all video, but it's live, but it's very awkward. I actually don't like it. <laughs> um, I actually, I told my bosses, I said, it's the first time dance feels like work to me because it's, it's so fun engaging with the students and seeing their personalities and asking them how their day was. And, you know, when they're in middle school, they talk to you about, oh, this boy said hi to me. And so I really miss that aspect of it. Um, so I'm not really sure with how things are going, what our dance studio is going to look like in the future, because um, our our building has decided to continue in not allowing people in. So I don't even know if next year in August, when the next dance school year starts, it starts at the same time at school, if it would be a physical dance studio or not a physical dance studio. So that's something I've been praying about because I'm like, Lord, you gave me this ability for a reason. You know, my friends always laugh because I say the only, the only gift God gave me is communication. I'm only a good dance teacher because I can talk a lot. <laughs> that's the only thing I'm good at <laughs> talking. So I said, God, you gave me this ability. So what are you going to do with it next? And I feel like I'm, I'm a little bit on pause right now, which is okay because I spent about nine years actually not dancing and not being involved in dance. And then the past four years I've gotten involved again. Um, so I'm like, well, if he has something, he, he'll let me know when it's time. And maybe right now it's time for a rest, but I'm not sure. We'll see. All right. Well, what is Roxy Morris's dream that has yet to come to fruition? Oh my goodness. That's so difficult. Well, you know, something that I, I always have in my heart is really working um, alongside people who are um, sex trafficked and human trafficking. And also something else that I really have dear to my heart is um, child abuse, especially sexual child abuse. So um, right now I'm friends with a few very good people who are in that industry. And through them, I've gotten to do a couple of volunteer things and they've invited me um, but I would really like to get a little bit more involved and then also be able to speak um, in, in more public places with, you know, like women's workshops and things like that um, and healing and helping um, women heal because women, we carry so much, you know, from, from an early age, I feel like women, we have this responsibility that's a little bit different um, and it's a little hard to understand. So I feel like there's a lot of healing that has to happen with us before we can move to the next level that God wants to take us into. So um, those are some of the things I would love to do. Well, this is an opportunity for you to share a message along that line. Uh, this is a communication network. So it's an yeah. opportunity for you to share. What would you say? I would say that the sooner that we realize how much God loves us and the sooner that we know who we are created to be and we ask him who, who, who he made us before we have all this baggage and we start healing and forgiving and letting go, 
the sooner God can walk us into the life that he really created for us here on earth, which is a life that doesn't look like anyone else's because it's so special and particular for ours. And it's so individual and God is so personal to us. And he, he talks to us individually and he sounds like us, you know, so that's what I would say. And um, if I could give advice, it would just be journal. I'm, I'm a big believer in writing down your questions for God and having him answer. And I believe that his answers come quickly if you are waiting for them and listening. And sometimes they can come through the word of God or through a song or through a message that someone um, says. Or sometimes you can just feel it in your heart. But having that dual understanding, God is talking to you at the same time you are talking to him because he's waiting for you to talk to him and ask him and be with him. And he loves you so much. Roxy, I'm so happy to have met you and I'm so happy to have shared this time. I know that the program is now coming to an end, but I would like for you to share contact information in the last few words. Yeah. So um, you can contact me via email. My email is roxymorris112, which stands for Psalms 112, which is my favorite Bible verse. Um, and it's at gmail.com. And um, you can also message me on Instagram. It's Roxy, it's the Roxy Morris. So first put the, and then Roxy Morris. And um, I'm also on Facebook as Roxy Morris. And um, my final thought would be that I hope that we all know that this time that God has set apart for us to be in our homes and be um, together is not wasted and that God has a purpose for it. And that if we lean into it and allow him to work in us, when we come out of this, we're going to come out even more beautifully and more stronger and more able to do what he's called us to do. Roxy, thank you so much for those wise words. Thank you for sharing this time with us. We bless you. We want to encourage you, please, to visit our website, ovmradio.com. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel in OVM Radio. You will find more information about our guest and many, many other things that I know will be of interest to you. God bless you.